Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of how to change the order of integration on a double integral. Let's compute the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from the inverse sine of y up to pi over 2 of cosine of cosine of x, then I'm going to do a dx, then a dy. So what I have here is I'm given a type 2 region. So note, this is a type 2 region. So our region of integration R, which is the set of points x and y, such that x is between these two functions, and y is between 0 and 1, y is between 0 and 1, and x is between the inverse sine of y and pi over 2. So this is a type 2 region. And this function, the antiderivative of cosine of cosine of x cannot be expressed in terms of elementary functions. Can't be expressed in terms of elementary functions. So I'll try to change this limit of integration, these limits of integration, to make it a type 1 region. So let's plot this region and see what we get. So our y is going to go between 0 and 1. And I have x equals inverse sine of y. So if x is equal to the inverse sine of y, that's the same as saying that y is equal to the sine of x. So these relationships are equivalent. So I'm going to draw, I'm more used to drawing the graph of sine of x. So sine of x looks like what? Looks like this. So this is one of two things. This is either equal to, so what we have here is x goes from this curve, and then at pi over 2, we know that the sine is equal to 1. So I'm saying that x is going from this curve over here. So this curve is one of two things. It's either y equals sine of x, or equivalently, x is equal to the inverse sine of y. So I'm making my region of integration like this. So there's my region of integration. So what we can do is we can treat this now as a type. This is a type 2 region to start. I can also think of this as a type 1 region. I can write our limits of integration. Let's write it down carefully now. So what can we think of? We can say that my x goes between 0 and pi over 2. So my x goes between 0 and pi over 2. I'm going to have a cosine of cosine of x. Then I'm going to have a dy, then a dx. So my x goes between 0 and pi over 2. Those are my x range. And what does y go between? Well, y starts over here at y equals 0 and goes up to this graph. And that's the graph y equals sine of x. So my y starts at 0 and goes up to sine of x. Now, the reason why this is much nicer is because if I do a y integral of this, there's no y's. So that's an easy antiderivative to compute. This is the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And I'm going to have a cosine of cosine of x. And then I'm going to have a times y, where y goes between 0 and sine of x dx. And this is the integral from 0 to pi over 2. And I'm going to have a cosine of cosine of x. And then when I plug in sine of x, I'm going to get a sine of x over here. And when I plug in y equals 0, there's nothing. So now my integral turns into this. And now I can tee myself up for a beautiful substitution. What I can do is I can let my u be cosine of x, then my du is going to be negative sine x dx. And I see that right here. So if I make this substitution, what's going to happen? Well, let's think about what happens to our limits. When x is equal to 0, the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 0, u is equal to 1. When x is equal to pi over 2, the cosine is equal to 0. Then I'm going to have a cosine of u. And then I have sine of x dx, which is the same thing as negative du. So this is a negative du. Of course, we can use that negative to flip the limits of integration. So this is the same thing as the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine of u du. And now I just have an antiderivative of cosine. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. So this is going to be sine of u from 1 to 0, because the derivative of sine is cosine. And this will be the sine of 1 minus the sine of 0. But the sine of 0 is 0. So the answer to this problem is just the sine of 1. And we can see by turning our integrand from a type 2, so this is type 2 over here,
type 2 to a type 1 over here, by changing from type 1 to type 2, we were able to actually compute the integral. This is a very, very useful technique, and by this point, we should be very comfortable with changing the limits of integration from type 1 to type 2, type 2 to type 1. Notice that when we change from type 1 to type 2, type 2 to type 1, it involves what calculation always? It always involves an inverse calculation of the limits of integration. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're changing the limits of integration. The order of integration is that you're going to need to use inverse functions when you're doing these problems. Thank you very much.